Hello, sports fan. This is Stephen Hill with Sports Choice Plus. I'm bringing you a very special breakdown. I'm going to be covering the top six NFL picks for the Dark Horse for MVP. Before we get right into this, I want to make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates and all the breakdowns. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Coming at number six, I know that he has a new coach, essentially a new offense, and you're looking at a new rebuild with a lot of different teammates. We're looking at him getting rid of a lot of his weapons, but having some pretty good weapons on the offense still to back himself up with that. And I'm talking about one Justin Herbert. If you look at the history of what Harbaugh has done, he's put guys in MVP conversations. He's put guys in prolific situations. And you're also looking right now at him having one of the best setups to not only have Justin Herbert be there, but I can see a 5,000-yard season from Justin Herbert rolling out of bed. Not only does the offense bode well running the football, but when you throw the football well, Essentially, it's because you could run the football. And I think that the offensive line has been improved enough to where Justin will be protected, and he'll also have a battering ram at running back. That brings him in number six. Coming in number five, this guy has had a, a heck of an offseason. He looks like he's in shape coming into uh, the season. I'm talking about Jordan Love. Not only does he essentially have one of the best running backs, not only in the backfield behind him, but you got to ask yourself, having Josh Jacobs, what does that do? That has one of the premier runners right behind him, allowing him to – Use play action. Use the run late in football games to, to scave off defenses, but also to get more comfortable throwing the football. Josh Jacobs outside the backfield can catch. He has a young wide receiving core that is elite, and I think that they're just going to get better. In this coach's offense, when you think of Coach LaFleur's offense, it's innovative. It's thought-provoking. It's a process where they're getting outside the box, not just doing basic run and throws. He's under the coaching tree of Sean McVay, so the mind's going to be active all game with plays, with designs, with setups. You're going to see him not only throw the ball well, but you're going to see the offense be led by an elite leader. Jordan Love is going to get his time to shine, and you're going to see a lot of what we've seen last season. Um, one of the top 10 scoring offenses going into this year, I think that's why he's going to be at number five. Coming in at number four, we're talking about Tua. Tua in Miami, he's going to have a lot of guys to throw to. Odell Beckham Jr., he's going to have Jalen Waddle and Tariq Hill. We could see three 1,000-yard receivers here. If Odell Beckham stays healthy, there's going to be a lot of underneath cushion that Odell Beckham can eat up. There's not many third corners in the NFL that can keep up with Odell Beckham, especially with the way that they use Mozart, the running back, the way that they use the tight end position. They're going to have guys running all over the place. It's going to be a track meet for the Miami Dolphins offensively. This is a year that I think the tour breaks 5,000 yards passing, and it's easy to say you can see Odell get a uh, play, or Jalen Waddle getting a play, and Tariq Hill possibly could break Calvin Johnson's record. I strongly feel like through uh, a couple of games last year, he was already on pace to break Calvin Johnson's record. He just slowed down because of injuries. I think there's going to be better this year, and he's going to play that much more in a situation for that. Um, and coming in at number three. Number three is a tough choice, but I had to go with – the guy that was the rookie of the year last year, essentially, uh, C.J. Stroud. Seeing what he was able to do last year and build on that. Coach D'Amico Ryans raves about him. Offenses rave about him. Other coaches rave about him. You see how he's breaking down film. He's accountable. The OTAs were crisp. He met with his guys. He had his new wide receiver core running like that. Having Stephon Diggs, having Michi, having Tank. you got a lot of different guys that have receiving cores that have different builds. They've essentially equipped this wide receiving core, this running back group, the defense with different amenities. They've rebuilt everything and reloaded everything and retooled everything. C.J. Stroud is some that, somebody that I can bank on for being an MVP. He does the work in the classroom. He does the work uh, before practice, after practice. He's a leader in the locker room. There's a reason why people are calling him an all-pro going into his second year, and that's because of it. Coming in number two, I think that Tariq Hill is going to have a breakout season. I think Tariq Hill is going to break Calvin Johnson's record. And I think that he's going to have a stronghold on this record for time to come because he's going to be catching the ball at least, I could see at least three 200-yard three games on his, on his schedule. When they're playing different teams and they have the advantage, I could see them playing teams in Miami and him going for 200, 300 yards in a single game. It's possible because he's that fast and he's that speedy all over the place. And lastly, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey not only led the league with a lot of different stats, he was pretty good off the ball as far as running the ball and catching in the backfield. Uh, uh, he was pretty good at not only blocking, he was pretty good at, at run protection, pass protection. Um, he was doing everything. Christian McCaffrey is essentially the best running back that we have and the best catching running back that we have. 
if you look at Brock Purdy and the detail that he has to break up the football between Ayuk, uh, Kittle, Debo Samuel, uh, you got to think. There's going to be a guy back there in Christian McCaffrey that can not only break out when he's getting blitzed, it's a guy that can catch the ball when he's in the sets, when he's moving around. And there's also times where he'll just take the ball from under center and do his thing. So you just got to ask yourself, they dial up plays for Christian McCaffrey all the time. He is leading the league with rushing yards. When his when his stat lines are finished, you're going to see one of the most prolific running backs of all time because he's doing it all purpose. He's not just running the football in between the lines. He's bouncing out. He's, he's catching the ball outside of the numbers, inside the numbers. They're getting him little screen plays. They're getting him involved where when he touches the ball, that unlocks the offense for the rest of the 49ers. And that creates so many mismatch problems because you're following McCaffrey. All of a sudden, Ayuk's up the field. You're following McCaffrey. Also, Debo Samuel's cutting across. Uh, Kittle's down the field blocking and then all of a sudden turning into a wide receiver. It's so many different things that this offense is doing. And I think that Brock Purdy is going to have a great season. That's going to make sure that uh, Christian McCaffrey has a great season as well. So I feel like all these guys on this list have an opportunity to get the MVP. It's up to them to go out and ball out, as you know. And I think that each one of these guys is going to have a great, spectacular season that's well above the rest. So what are your Dark Horse candidates? What are your top six candidates? Definitely check out Sports Choice Plus on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the very next video.